Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Tony and I'm a professional color grader. So I've been working in DaVinci Resolve for a long time, but I know as a new user of DaVinci Resolve, the interface and all the options in the color page might be pretty overwhelming and there's a lot of things you're not really sure of how they work and what they do. So instead of just going over the whole UI and everything, I wanted to share with you my best tips and tricks to the color page and color grading techniques. These are pretty simple but very powerful techniques. You might not find them all useful for you, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna find a lot of them useful in your workflow. So let's just jump over to DaVinci Resolve and get to it. Okay, so the first thing you wanna make sure you get set up correctly is your color management. You can enter your project manager to set it up via the file menu, menu project manager, or you can go to the lower right hand corner and open your project manager, go into color management and set up DaVinci Wire to be color managed, set it to SDR and you most likely output SDR Rex 709. Now this just means DaVinci Resolve will handle all the color management for you in the background. You don't have to worry about it. You click save and then your project is color managed. Now a progress file will not have the metadata to tell DaVinci Resolve what it is shot on. So you can help DaVinci on the way by right clicking and go into input color space. And I happen to know this is shot on red. So I'll go down to red and this is red white gamut. RGB lock 3G10 and once I click that we have a normalized image and this one I know is shot on ARRI so again right click input color space ARRI and this is lock C3 and you have a color managed uh, image and you're ready to go. If you have raw footage uh, you'll have all that information embedded in the footage and DaVinci Resolve will read that automatically and uh, color manage everything for you. So now you have everything set up and you are basically set to go. You can adjust multiple clips or you can group cl clips and you can adjust them that way so you don't have to do it on a clip per clip basis but you definitely want to have your color management set up correctly. Now you're 70-80% of the, the way and you're ready to go. So you probably know your basic serial notes where you can just add notes after each other and you can just grade from one note to the next. But you might run into some issues when you're doing specific kind of grades. And let me show you how you can use a layer mixer if you have this specific need for it. So let's say you have this blue background here and I, for some reason, want to desaturate this blue background. I want to have a neutral gray so one way I could do it is use the qualifier key here qualify the image let me just move the scopes up and then I'm gonna clean the black and the whites and I'm gonna blur it quite a bit and maybe even give it some some denoise like so so you have this selected and now we can just do a simple desaturation and bring it back to gray something like this Let's say in the next node, I'm going to add a serial node, node Alt S. You want to bring in some juice in the skin. I want to lighten it up or give it some color. So I'm going to add, going to push in some yellows in my gamma wheel down here. The problem now is if I turn this node off and on and you look at the background, also, I also introduced the yellow to the background. And let's say I don't want that. So one way to do that, to get around that issue is to add a layer node. And you can do that by right clicking, add node and add layer. That will add a mixer, the one you see here. And you have your node and another node and they get mixed together with the layer mixer. Another way to do that, a quicker way to do that, let me just undo here, is just pressing Alt L I'll set up the layer mixer for you. In this node, if I turn on highlight, we have our mask and we can take that mask alone by itself by clicking here. 
I'm dragging the alpha output to the alpha input of the lower note here. So now in this note, you can see the thumbnail changed. Now you only have the alpha mask in this note. And unlike Photoshop and DaVinci Resolve, notes get read from the top down. So the bottom note here is actually the last one on the top note. It's kind of confusing, but once you get used to it, you just switch it around compared to Photoshop. So now in this note, I have all my yellow that I introduced in the gamma and on the right hand side or in the bottom note here, I have my desaturated blues. And if I turn the top one on and off, you can see if I zoom in, it's not affecting the background. This is off on, it's not affecting the background. So I'm just looking at adjusting her skin on this note and not the blues. Layer makes a notes. Can be a little confusing concept, but once you wrap your head around it, it's very useful. And for something like this, it's a perfect tool. Again, like in almost all tools in DaVinci Resolve, there's multiple ways of doing this. But let me just show you one way to easily desaturate your shadows. Let's say I have this and primary node here, and I introduce a little bit of contrast. And I maybe push in quite a bit of yellow in the midtones and the highlights. As you see, this also affects all the blacks and especially her hair, her hair. So if I turn it on and off, you can see that went from black hair to brownish hair. And I really like some black black so if you want to deset that you can add another note and you can go into let me just move the scopes over here to your curves and you go over to your luminance versus set and let me bring that out what you can see here is in the dark illuminated areas you can control the saturation so you can click one of the presets you can click the black here and it will select the black part of the image for you. You can drag that over a little bit if you want to affect them more. And then you can desaturate the blacks like so. And the more you bring it over, the more you're going to affect the midtones. Let me just zoom in a little bit on her hair like so. And desaturate it like that. And let's turn it off and on. Zoom in real good on her hair. Off, on. And you can see you have desaturated the blacks. Now you have to be careful with this tool. You want to make sure you have a slow and gentle roll off. You don't want to create weird things like this. This will give you banding and weird artifacts. So right click on the control points here and just make sure you have a soft, smooth curve and then adjust how far into the midtones you want to adjust everything like this. Easy way to desaturate your blacks. Adjustment clips is a adjustment clips is a great way to very quickly do some grading to a lot of clips. So the way you can enable that is on the edit page. You go under the effects and with toolbox selected, you can search for adjustment clip and you can drag that onto your timeline. And let's say you have a steady situation like you have talking heads, you have interviews and you want to create like a vignette for everything. Then instead of going to the color tab and creating a vignette for every single clip, you can just create a adjustment clip like so. And it will affect all the clips under the adjustment. So go back to color page and you can see now I have the adjustment clip selected and not the actual video clip, but the adjustment clip. So I'm going to go to power windows, I'm going to create a circle. Let me zoom out a little bit and let's create a big soft vignette like so. I'm going to invert it and then I'm going to my offset button here and invert or offset the outside. I'm going to turn the window off and now you can see I created a nice vignette. But the cool thing now is if you go back to the edit page, you can either alt click and copy 
that adjustment clip to another part of your image, like so. You can turn it on and off. Or you can just drag it out as far as you want and let it cover as many clips as you want. So once you have that selected, you can see it's now affecting all the clips under the adjustment clip. Really useful, can come in handy in a lot of, a lot of situations where you just need to do a real quick fix or a simple vignette over a lot of clips. Dynamic project switching is one of those things that might sound a bit unsexy, but it's really, really cool to know about. So if you go down to your home icon down here at the bottom right hand corner and in your gray area here, you right click and in the contextual menu, you select dynamic project switching and you can save and open your project. And now what this does is it enables you to go from project to project. So if you have multiple timelines where you want to copy paste things to and from, you don't have to go back and forth all the time. You can just open those timelines and up here at the top, you can switch to another timeline. Maybe you have an adjustment clip here. You just select it, command C to copy it. You can go back and you can place your playhead where you want to insert it and paste it in and you'll have that effect immediately into your new project. So just be aware that the more projects you have opened, the more taxing it's going to be on this system. But dynamic project switching is a really, really easy way to switch back and forth and copy paste stuff. Power grades are a really, really cool way of reusing your grades from project to project. So let's say you have a grade here that you really like and if you open your gallery and you right click and you save a still, you will have that still for this project. But let's say you switch to another project, then you still won't be there because it will only be available in that single project. What you can do instead is if you switch back to the project here, you can right click here in the side and add a power grade album and you can double click and Rename that my grades. So we take the still now from the stills album and drag it onto my grades. So now you have it here. If you go back and switch to another project, you will have your grade here and you can double click and enable that right away. Maybe you don't want to use all the notes in the still. So what you can do is you can still open or right click the still and you can display the note graph and here you can drag notes onto your timeline like so so maybe you have two or three notes and you don't want to use them all you can just drag them like so onto your timeline but make sure it is saved as a power grade so power grades will be available in all projects on the same database Qualifier Focus is one of the most useful tools you'll find when you start color grading for your skin tones. So your skin tones is without a doubt the most important thing in any grade. You want to make sure you get your skin tones just right and to make sure you measure and get everything right you can go to your vector scope and you can go to your settings and you can enable your skin tone indicator and this will show you where a balanced skin tone will be in your image. But to, in order to see where the, the skin is in the vector scope, you have to enable by the contextual menu here, or the optional menu, go to display qualifier focus, enable that. And if you don't see it up here in the tool, you might, or in the viewer, you might want to enable qualifier. And once you do that now, you can see down here in the scopes on the right hand side that wherever I hover, my qualifier will be shown in your vector scope or in your other scope. So a really great way to see where you are. And also you can use it to set your or correct your, your white balance. So you can hover over anything white and make sure you get everything just as you want them. Split screen is another really helpful tool when you want to match clips to each other. So let's say you have these three clips and you want to match them to each other. So 
to watch them side by side, you go up to your split screen view, this one right here, and you select that and you're like, okay, but where are they? Well, it will default to your still images. So instead you can use the drop down to choose select the clips and that will show you the clips you have selected and you can select more clips if needed and you can even play them like so. And if you have two clips selected, you can see here in the scopes, it will split up the waveform. You will see them overlaid in the vector scope. There's no way to bring them next to each other, but in the waveform and in the parade, you can see they'll be split up here in the middle and you can play them and see how they match up. Great tool to color match your clips. And the last thing I want to talk about is tracking. So in a clip like this, if you want to offset, for example, the car like here, maybe you want to go to your windows and you want to drag not a gradient, you want to draw a quick selection around the car like so. And we're going to soften it up quite a bit like so. And let's say you want to bring that up. So I'm going to bring it up with the offset down here, bring that up. And now we brought the car out. Great, but the image is moving, so we'll need to track it. So what you do is you go to your tracker tool, select that, and you have the option to track backwards and forward, or forward and reverse, like so. DaVinci Resolve, in almost all cases, does a, an amazing job of tracking everything, but should you go a bit rogue here, you can select frame instead of clip, and you can tweak your tool like so. I'm not going to go too much into detail. I have a separate video about this that you can find up here. And then you can color grade that power window by itself. And as you can see, the window is following the car now nicely now. You can turn it off and you can turn the node on and off like so. It's one of those tools that you might want to investigate a little bit more and get a little bit better at because it's so powerful and useful. So I really hope you enjoyed the tips here about color grading. If you did, please consider subscribing, giving us a thumbs up. It really helps us get out there and make more videos like this. And uh, I just hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, happy grading.